get the U.S. out of the U.N. What do we do with like the United Nations, for example, that Biden just rejoined a bunch of U.N. agencies, including UNESCO. Gonna... Trump got us out of several of them. What do we do with I, I, the U.N.? I am, uh... Let's make a lot of people mad. I think there are good reasons to exit the U.N. Mm -hmm. The reason that I think we need to get out of the U.N. is, well, it's full of dictators. Mm. And it's also um, something that I don't think our sovereign government should defer to. We provide like 90 percent of the funding for the United Nations for their activities uh, overseas, their I intervention and whatnot. And so... Um, you know, the other countries who are in there, they don't pay their fair share, but uh, a fair share would be zero and we should get out. Walk through, in your mind, where we've already acceded to what you would consider to be treaty obligations that have taken the sovereignty of the American people but are currently already being implemented. The globalist agenda hiding in plain sight continues to elude our indoctrinated brothers and sisters. However, those with the eyes to see have the power to decipher and discern what is really meant by terms like diversity, equity, inclusion, social justice, sustainability, and so on. And speaking of so-called sustainability efforts, understanding the United Nations proposed 17 sustainable development goals for their 2030 agenda is crucial as we continue to decode the encoded messaging. So how long until the normies catch on that this is a war against life itself? Remember, folks, in this world, things are often not what they appear to be. Joining us now, CEO of Liberty Sentinel Media and author of the new book, Indoctrinating Our Children to Death, Alex Newman. Thanks so much for being back with us. It's great to see you. Great to be here. Thank you so much, Allison. And congratulations for one year of amazingness. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. You're the best, too. And it's such a pleasure to have you as a regular guest on our show. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today to celebrate the one-year anniversary. Uh, so, Alex, I want to know, do you spot a theme or a trend within these so-called sustainable development goals? I hope people understand, Allison, that when the head of the U.N. General Assembly called this the master plan for humanity, uh, they are not kidding. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm sure God had a really good chuckle about that master plan for humanity. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> but, um, you know, under the guise of solving all these real and imagined problems, they are asking essentially for a blank check on humanity's bank account and on humanity's freedom. Right? If we're going to solve hunger, we need to be able to basically rearrange the entire economy. We need to be able to, as they say, uh, control the production and consumption of goods and services, which is, of course, Marxism 101. We need to be able to micromanage agriculture, uh, fishing, the environment, the water. Right? They want to put basically all power and all authority in the hands of the United Nations. And they say it so clearly in this document. If you go to goal number 10, they, they make it quite clear that national socialism is not enough anymore. They say we need wealth redistribution both within and among countries. Um, if you go to goal number four, where they talk about quality education, you don't even have to read between the lines. They say basically every child on this planet must be so brainwashed, they won't just passively submit to this UN ideology from the pit of hell, they will actively promote it, right? It says they will promote uh, what the UN calls human rights, which is the opposite of Americans' understanding of human rights, that God gave us rights, government should protect those. The UN has it backwards. The government gives you rights, if it feels like you can be trusted. If not, they'll take them away. 
um, it, on every single point, the gender equality, by which they mean, you know, dismantle the family, uh, get rid of uh, uh, the patriarchy is a term they like to throw out there <laughs> when they talk about sustainable development. It, it's just take everything God decreed in his word and flip it upside down. So this is an agenda from hell. It is absolutely wicked. And come September, they've got the summit for the future. They hope to further empower the U.N. Folks, pay attention. Your life, your liberty, your property, your family, it's all on the line. Yeah, Alex, I think you summed it up beautifully there when you called it the agenda from hell. That's exactly what it is, and it's terrifying to think of a future uh, that entails all of this madness. Uh, I'm curious to know, Alex, because you're such an expert on this, when did the elites become so obsessed with this agenda of making this all come to fruition by 2030? Why was this the year that they selected as a goal for such radical change, and, and how long has ultimately all of this been in the works for? Yeah, you see some really interesting parallels, Allison, between the old Soviet plans and the UN plans, right? The Soviets would come up with a five-year plan and a 10-year plan. And it was always these things that were just totally ridiculous. We're going to double agriculture output. We're going to triple uh, industrial output. And of course, none of that ever happened, right? The Soviet mm -hmm. Union ended up consuming even the capital that they needed to make goods and services uh, because, of course, central planning doesn't work. And so what we're seeing with the UN is they love these big plans. So Agenda 21, they, they call that the Agenda for the 21st century. That was approved back in 1992 under the leadership of George H.W. New World Order Bush, <laughs> right? Uh, big time at Skull and Bones, big time at Bohemian Grove, big time at the Council on Foreign Relations. So uh, that was the 100 year plan, right? The 21st century. And then they break it down into bite sized bits, just like the Soviets used to do. So they had the Millennium Development Goals, it was from 2000 to 2015. Of course, none of these things are ever attainable, right? We're going to get rid of poverty as long as you give up all your freedom and all your money. Total ridiculousness. Yeah. So they didn't get rid of poverty. Well, now they've got the next 15 year plan. And what we're going to see is the exact same thing, Allison. We're already starting to see them cry oh, we're not going to reach the sustainable development goals by 2030. We need more money. We need you to give up more of your freedom. We need more. <laughs> More power in the hands of the UN. So folks, watch out. These 15-year plans, these 100-year plans, these are the products of madmen, megalomaniacs, and would-be totalitarians. We have to stop them. Yeah, and they're going to stop at nothing to make this all happen. I mean, nothing's ever going to be good enough for them. So yeah, better to speak up now while we still have the ability to do so before That's it's right. too late. Uh, Alex, as we know, the United Nations was founded in 1945 under the guise of maintaining international peace and security. Uh, but I'm not convinced that's what they're actually doing, and I think anyone with half a brain can see that. But do you believe that they began with nefarious intent, or is this something that more so evolved over time? Uh, it's quite clear, and it's in the public record, this began with nefarious intent. You look at, for example, the key founders, right? 1945, after World War II, Stalin sent uh, his foreign minister, Mr. Molotov. These were two of the worst mass murdering savages and butchers to ever step foot on this planet. Together, they slaughtered tens of millions of people, right? Not the kind of people you'd want to have a beer with, much less let them rule over your planet. Uh, then on our side, we sent Alger Hiss, and then, of course, I really liked him. They made him the chairman of the conference that wrote the UN Charter. He took all the delegates down to the weird thing at the Bohemian Grove with all the occultists. And then uh, then they made him the first secretary general of the UN. And then we threw him in prison because we found out he was a spy for Joseph Stalin. Actually, it was Richard <laughs> Nixon who prosecuted him, interestingly. Wow. So they always had this wicked agenda. And even the U.S. Secretary of State at the time, quite an evildoer. Uh, he was one of the co-founders of the Council on, Fo on, on Foreign Relations, John Foster Dulles. He wrote a book. It was published in 1950 called War or Peace. And he reveals in that book, and, and people can read this for themselves, it's at your local library, the plan was always to turn the UN into a one world government. And he said the existing UN charter would be quite adequate for doing that. So folks, that has been the plan from the beginning. They tried it with the League of Nations and they failed because our Senate refused to participate. They're trying it again now. They might may try to use another world war or something like that to get it off the ground. But that's where this is ultimately going, ladies and gentlemen, a totalitarian one world government, unless we stop it. Incredible information, Alex. Wow. You know, it truly is just global organized crime. And if if world leaders don't want to go along with it, they become a uh, new new world's bad guy. And then and the next thing you know, the U.S. empire manufactures consent to go spread democracy. Alex, you have a new, a new short film out. Can you tell us more about that and what sort of power ultimately we, we the people have and how we push back and resist against this? 
Uh, well, thank you, Allison. Yeah, we, uh, me and my staff, we just put together a wonderful little 20-minute segment going through some of what's been going on with the UN for a while now. Uh, I've been covering the UN my entire career in journalism, right out of journalism school. I went to Copenhagen to cover their climate summit there, the COP15, and I've been going to virtually every one since, and a whole lot of other ones. Uh, I try to follow them around and expose what they're doing. So uh, we break down some of that. We've interviewed a lot of the highest level people in the UN, all the way up to you know Under Secretary General. We've developed lots of sources in there because, unfortunately, there is no no one doing critical reporting on the UN. But mm -hmm. folks can find that at our Twitter or at our Rumble. Um, it's just a 20 minute little thing about what's going on in the UN and then how we stop it. There's several ways. Uh, there's two bills, one in the House, one in the Senate to get us out. It's a great step. Uh, also, we could defund it. Unfortunately, the House voted this morning for this <laughs> atrocity of a budget that's going to give them all the money they need. But there's always next year. <laughs> always next year. Well, Alex, thank you so much for all the great work that you do to shed light on this. I highly encourage everyone to check that film out and spread it around to everyone you know. We need to get this in the hands of the people that aren't catching on yet. Alex Newman, thank you so much for joining us today and being a part of In Focus. We appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Allison. Appreciate you too. And congratulations one more time. Thank you so much. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard hitting, straight shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.